was to chose to be at the, then a trustee could, would you want to clarify? Wait, wait, wait. So in another, yes, none, of the other non, yeah, none of the other non-elected <laughs> members want uh, put in their name for the chair position, then a, then a trustee? Do we want to narrow it that way? Or so again, the way we have it now, it's if the CDA decides that's the right person, then that's who gets voted. Right. I think that makes sense. Yeah. I think it's nice. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, no. Go ahead. No, oh, I, I think the reality is you, it's probably good to have some flexibility on it. Yeah. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the, the value of the document the some default, flexibility, yes. but some structure, right? Yeah, the default creates that flexibility. And I go along with that. I'm just, my, my knee jerk is I would probably prefer that the person not be one of the trustees mm -hmm. because it's a different relationship. On the board, that they want. Yeah, that's what uh -huh. I've always felt. So, yeah. But, hey, that's you. The idea of, uh, well, and also the idea of having some flexibility. Yeah. Well, would, if we uh, would change it, would, would we also want to put then just one trustee on here? I mean, seven, two out of seven. That's showing think my statute. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's just my statute. Yeah. yeah. So like that, that I don't think is it an issue at all. I mean, that's, I. it's fair to raise that, but I, that mm -hmm. I don't. I really? like the two. I think that provides some oh, yeah. clarity and consistency between the board and the CDA, which mm -hmm. is important. Well, it should. I mean, you could have it written that um, citizen members, that the preference would be that the first order would be citizen member, a citizen member would be chair, and then it, if there are no that they, um, if there are no citizens member, citizen members that would fulfill this position, that tr a trustee would have the ability to step in. I mean, you could have that. Right. As about, yeah, it alludes, yeah. you know. I think you'd probably have to change the resolution. You'd have to have a resolution on modifying the original re resolution. That's the true. Village board yeah, resolution. to be consistent. Yeah. I would think so, because the resolution. Because we're clarifying it further. Yeah, which I don't okay. think it's that important to do. Right. Yeah. You had, well, I, I don't, I mean, I um, so just wanted to share with you that a lot of times when more trustees are on a CBA in communities, it's because you don't have a pool to serve right. Right. or who desires to serve, and your community is so fortunate mm -hmm. to have other members who not only have the desire but the skills to be able to lead. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Guy can um, interject when he, like, but when he likes, but being a village president, when you do your appointments, um, any new village president I've ever worked for who has to go through the appointment process has inevitably come into my office and said, man, this is really, this is tough. Because they're not only evaluating this group, but how it interplays with every single other group that they have. And what, also, what smart leaders know is that by putting the same people in the same spots all the time isn't effective for their community. So it becomes inherently harder for them if they don't have a pool, and you do have a pool. Um, and you know, Shorewood, I've only been here three months, mm -hmm. but likes to have many people involved. You know, so um, the it really this is designed to give that leader, the president, the discretion to evaluate the whole group. And many people, there's no other person in the organization who's evaluating the whole group like that person is. Mm -hmm. um, fortunate or unfortunate sometimes, right, guy? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's tough because when you're in the president's role, you know, it's one thing to be a trustee. It's a completely different ballgame to be a president, and it becomes much less about you mm -hmm. than it is trying to figure out how to build the entire team, you know? Mm -hmm. that's, but That's really helpful because what it brings me back to is that I think the default is important because the bylaws are about keeping the body um, solvent and functional. <laughs> and so we need to have that default in there because if, you know, if for any other reason and we're in a situation where we don't have the pool or there's, you know, a great transition, then the president can step in, kind of, you know, keep the eye on the prize and can always step out again. So. I think this is about keeping this entity intact, efficient, functional for the better of the community. And, and I think the way that it's worded does that, you know. And then also gives 
discretion when we're in that place of abundance, which we have been, that we can embrace that and, and do it a different way. So I appreciate, Go on. so I would, I would remove my, you know, I don't have a recommendation right. other than to leave it as is, and I really appreciate the opportunity to think it through. So what I'm hearing is it's staying the same. Yeah, I mean, do we agree with that? Yes. Okay. I'm going to throw out the stinky yogurt. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> My comment was back where we were yep. with heat. That, um, I don't think we're a zoning body, so I think we should be careful how we, you know, if we want to weigh in on zoning, that's great, but that's the plan commission and that's the village board. That's not. CDA. In the past, the uh, I would say probably mainly in connection with the master two master plans, the two versions. Uh, to the extent that the CDA drove the master plan, it basically uh, really facilitated the whole rezoning of the business district back in uh, 06 or whatever that was. Uh, and then there were some other things that were initiated. Of, of, Apart from that, I believe I reckon the whole thing about uh, needing second floors. Uh, I guess I don't have any problem with us weighing in on things, but I don't think we should, just because we did things in the past, I, I think the statute actually says we shouldn't do the master plan. So I think we just need to be careful. You know, we can use our legwork, use our energies, but I don't want to try to give ourselves powers. Yeah, I mean, if we want to send stuff to the plan commission and just be the generator. Like recommendations. Recommendations, that's why I wanted to kind of stick with recommendations. For 2A. That's what it says, though, isn't it? CDA makes recommendations. No, it says preparation and implementation of the master plan. Yeah, we're looking at 2A, Pete, on the master plan. I'm trying to find the reference. Uh, <coughs> it says 2B, but 2B is. Uh, no, we're on, we're on Andrea's 2A. Yeah, 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 I see it here. Yeah, okay. It just says provide recommendations on rezoning and redevelopment. It says, A says prepare yep. and implement the master plan. You're looking at Allison's 2B. We're, we're looking at oh, all right. 2A. <clears throat> Where is it, where in the document is what, what uh, Andrea is what you're referring to? Where in, in the uh, in 2A, page five. Page five. Well, uh, page one. Okay, I see. I see. Five, 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 five. Oh, so you're saying it's, it's basically too strong, and we are. Yeah, the, our I, official I, role is to provide a recommendation. I, 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 I don't I'm, even know if that's our official role, okay. but I have no problem with that. I, I, I'm, I'm, good, I'm good with that. Okay. Just let's not try to. Yeah. No, that's a that really important into something. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's going to roll into it. I had the same question, and it would be good to just to get some a little clarification of the two bodies, because from my experience, Andrew is totally correct that the the plan commission was the one that all zoning went to, and and they really. So what what I remember was the CDA or the redevelopment authority made recommendations, you could make recommendations on zoning for, for in TIDs, that makes total sense to me. Um, and I've seen that, you know, a recommendation, could you, you're basically, you, you're laying out your redevelopment plan for an area, and then some of it might need to be rezoned, but I do have that question coming up of how far. That's what I assume that it, re that it referred to, um, TID rezoning and redevelopment recommendations just because it would be part of the process. I mean, you're not even, you know, you wouldn't be creating a TID if you didn't think it should be <laughs> but redeveloped. Provide, so, provide but recommendations is still consistent with what we'd be doing under that, right? We're right. still making those recommendations. Yeah, no, you're saying B, but we're talking about A and um, preparation and provision. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we just resolved A. So with B, it's similar um, that it's recommendations, but if you want to specify that it's within a TID. I do. Um, Let's see. I'll wait till this. Yep, yep. All right, so for 2A for Andrea, are we agreed it's provide recommendations on Village of Shore and Central District Master Plan and periodic updates? Are they agreed? We 
who's responsible for facilitating it then? It's never been done by the planning commission. Right. And but again, I, I would say that's more operational. That's right. sort of determined as it happens. Mm -hmm. it, it may change over time. Maybe it's. Can we ask Erica? As it well, happens? as the old planner, I would say I would keep Not that two. Old. As far as B goes, I, I would say keep it in because right now how the plan commission serves is a, a bit of a silo. They have applications that go to them and when somewhere it is decided that a plan, the master plan needs to be updated, then they get involved. But this, the CBA knows what the limitations are with our zoning when we start reviewing developer ideas and concepts and how it doesn't apply. And I would think that this board would say, this is just not working with our zoning. And maybe it's not recommendations, maybe it just it's, I don't know, you're evaluating, you're, you're, maybe it's an annual review or commentary. I, I don't know, but I would leave it in. Can you ask you'd leave, I'm sorry, you'd leave. I would leave B, B. in. Because, yeah, it's just, it's recommendations are just your, your opinions, you know. This is how it's working. It's this is how it's not working. Because, as again, the plan commission isn't in the workings like you are, you know. But sometimes they don't have meetings because there's no applications. But there's meetings. Can I just, just clarify? So you're speaking about 2B specifically? Then? Correct. 2B. So with respect to 2, are we, are we agreed, though, on 2A? Can I just get I that? I have. Yes? But to provide recommendations on Central District Master Plan if you have updates, that is our... Unless there's point. anything from Bart or Rebecca to consider, because we haven't heard from them. Well, I think we had... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, well, uh, Member Petrie mentioned the same thing on yeah. facilitation and implementation of that plan. Um, did you guys want to define mm -hmm. who is more of a driver of that? That was the one question I think that we were starting to work on right. um, in terms of implementation, I guess, of the plan. You could make recommendations, the plan commission can approve it. Do you want to specify a body or your role? I well, think that's a question. I do have a question, because for, I think it's a bunch of bodies. Um, when you look at that document, it's not just CBA sure. is responsible, it's the bid, it's the, I mean, it was a, it's a plan for the village, and then you have all these different bodies that implement it. Participate. Yeah, it's shared. It's a shared implementation. But I just, it does, but it is, it is guiding mm -hmm. our priorities. I mean, of course. it's not limited to, but it is a, it's constantly, we're referring to that in Vision 2025 pretty regularly, so I think it makes sense to. Yes, but if you're saying who, who's in charge of doing the implementation, I just want to be careful, because when I read it, as even as a bid board member, I, I felt like it's divided of who, who the, yeah, but everybody has a different role. I don't want to interrupt you, but I do have a thought. So, um, the facilitation, though, is an interesting. Facilitating might be. Yeah, great. Right because it, it, it did kind of, it, my recollection is that it was generated from the CDA in terms of like the, the actual facilitation last time around, right? Both of them. Yeah. And that makes complete uh, sense to me because, because of the you got to have a starting point. The other operate procedural roles that are involved. Nobody else has the same sort of mission to explore and propose and engage in developing development. <laughs> um, I'm just thinking through. But I'm sorry, Andrew. You said officially it's. Well, that's statute. Right. Yeah. I don't want to conflict with statute, that's for sure. I think there's a quote in the statute that yes. says you have all yes. sorts of authorities except, except yes. the master plan for the village. Yeah. So yeah. I just don't want to do something that's obviously... Right, and the village board adopts totally contrary yes. to that. doesn't mean yeah. we can't participate. Adapt, participate, even be the generator. Yes. I, I don't want to... I think that's what we want to. And again, is that day. you know, is that is that kind of discussion at the level of bylaws, Good or point. is that more again, I guess priorities other and documents and operational procedures and priorities and all. To me, bylaws is again, yeah. how do we work? Yep, true. <laughs> the framework. Except for we got it in here. Like, 
as our yes, we do. That's our yeah. jumps right out of well, that's I, our I first feel like, I feel like your state your statement was to back away from what Try, we have right. there, and our discussion is sort of yeah. seems to be going further down. I'm more of a preference of backing Anyways. away from it because it's not it, again, it's not part of I don't believe it's part of the structure. So I think I think provide recommendations, I agree with you, I'm fine with that. I think at that level that seems like a reasonable Inoculous. balance, but I don't want to go I would be well, able to go further than that. And the reason I that think that, that that takes care of the uh, basically uh, the recommendation could be the do master plan. I mean, yep. right. right now, nobody, nobody but the CDA in the village, no other body thinks that they're responsible for that, the regardless of what the statutes and everybody say. So there would have never been a master plan. In the history of the CDA, if the CDA hadn't said, we're going to do a master plan, here's a committee, we'll put the right people on it, we'll send it to the plan commission at the appropriate time and the village board at the appropriate time. Well, so, I but I disagree uh, with that going forward, and, and Pete, this is what I think we're having a discussion about. This is a good discussion, I think, because I mean, you always have the village board. Right. We would have policy, so we, we could always have our planners, you know, developing a master plan and involving all of the village committees, including, but the plan, what, what statute says is that what we should be doing is having the planning commission being, the, not maybe not taking the lead, but, but really facilitating that. And um, so what we did in the past and what we might be doing in the future, I guess, is the conversation that's going on here. And Pete, I feel like, I mean, so the CDA sort of, maybe this is not a great way to say it, but fill the gap seeing a need for the master plan and so s stepped in so uh, and appropriately so but yeah I mean, I, move so again I think that was a role we we took on but you would think moving forward this is kind of driven by the board right. and the board saying it is time for a new master plan or that's where the direction comes and whether it's the planner or the board can sort of define who what how when right that's sort with, of the yeah, I think what you're describing was probably an operational because that the CDA wouldn't have engaged in right. that activity we without there. the approval and direction of the president and the village manager as executive right. director. Yes. So I think we're leaving out that yeah. part. In and the end, we were provided direction by exactly. the village board to do what this, yeah, to do. You can board. always assume that whatever. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's from some, I wasn't, of course I wasn't here, but like when I read the documents, that's how it does read. It was purposeful. I mean, because Vision 2025 is for 10 years. Your master plan was slated to be 10 years. They're both kicking off at the same time. All received village board approval. So your priorities as the CDA should be to focus on that master plan yep. when you look at development. I don't think that that's really a question. That's the oh. policy that's been set. You should be looking and at it. And it comes from someplace else. It doesn't come from our bylaws necessarily. Correct. Yes. You may have, gener like Andrea said, you may have generated the document, but the plan commission ultimately provided a recommendation to the board as to whether they, they felt it was an appropriate one to use. So, and you're, also keep in mind that your relationship with the plan commission and the board is collaborative. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to have some, I mean, I, it, you know, in the community that was in prior, I had the three of those groups meet pretty frequently when it came down to something just, you know, if we were needing to get something done. So you all take a different role, you all have a, a role in the process, but inherently there will be some conversational overlap. But when, just for, for Andrea's point, when the staff reviewed it and we saw our comment, we sat back and we were like, oh, oh yeah. We should change that. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, no, I said the same thing. So, so yeah. but, I mean, I enjoyed the discussion. It's helping me. So, learn. are you comfortable with the provide recommend with that? Yeah, that we, is... we sat back and we we're like, oh yeah, it's an important clarification. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. I think we're yeah. in agreement on that one. Well, one one other point, and that the, the way the implementation has occurred in the past is that after a master plan has been approved, it's gone through the process. The village manager in the past, Chris, uh, in my experience, had uh, basically said, well, here's all the stuff that's got to be done, and he parses them out. And it's a very deliberate role. If, there, if, if that role is not assigned, that will not be done properly. Right, and but it's, it's, I'm sorry. It's, well, I, I think this, this document is becoming so bland, it doesn't do anything. 
I guess is what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think that fine. the um, implementation, so that function of um, your experience of the village manager um, parsing out the implementation, yes. it, I think that that's coming from the village manager's role outside the CVA, and some of that comes to the CVA through the role as executive director. But since it starts from another outside this body, um, I'm comfortable with, um, again, just identifying that we have an active collaborative, collaborative, collaboration with implementation of strategic plans. Um, but it's not coming from based it's not coming from action taken by this body necessarily in a vacuum in a vacuum it comes to us as an opportunity being part of a larger organization that's being guided by an overall plan uh, yeah i agree with Tristan mckay that an overall comprehensive plan i mean my master's in smart planning you know smart growth and comprehensive planning and you you develop your master plan and the it's the body it's you know it's it would be Chris it would be Rebecca now I mean as the head of our agency um, for the village and then the board adopts it now you might have multiple partners um, you may have standing committee like when we would do a comp plan you have the bid would be a partner the CDA would be a partner and you have this form this little group it was called you know I can't remember the name we called it but and then in the end the reason you do that up front is because you want their all the groups buy-in and in the end, you parse out the implementation, but it can't come from this body because we are one of those actors, in my opinion. That it's Sorry, a, so that really puts the village manager at the control. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. in yeah. the village yeah. manager role, not as and executive director at CDA. CDA. Right. That's, a, that's a different hat. Yep. That, that's my experience. Um, right, we're in agreement. Yeah. Okay. Listen. So just one one more thing for me. I'm sorry, it's taking up time. But then, I mean, I always look at something, a document, as an opportunity to clarify something. And if this isn't the place to do it, there's been confusion in the past about these things. So I think that we ought to, you know, the, the respective roles of the parties in a master.